Hello friends, it is Tuesday, the first week of Lent, and the title for our devotion today is Too Much Salt. We're going to read Psalm 107 verses 28 through 38 for our scripture reading today. I already have my Bible all set and ready to go. After you've pressed pause and have gotten yourself set up, press play again and we're going to read this together, okay? So Psalm 107, 28 through 38 says this. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble and he delivered them from their distress he made the storm be still, and the waves of the sea were hushed. Then they were glad that the waters were quiet, and he brought them to their desired haven. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wondrous works to the children of man. Let them extol him in the congregation of the people, and praise him in the assembly of the elders. He turns rivers into a desert, springs of water into thirsty ground, and fruitful land into salty waste because of the evil of its inhabitants. He turns a desert into pools of water, a parched land into springs of water, and there he lets the hungry dwell, and they establish a city to live in. They sow fields and plant vineyards and get a fruitful yield. By his blessing, they multiply greatly and he does not let their livestock diminish. So in this, we again see God's awesome power over creation, don't we? It starts off with praise and thanksgiving, and then it goes into how he can will creation to both dry up and produce lots and lots of vegetation because of all the pools of water that he himself created and still controls. Isn't that wonderful? Oh, it's so great. Okay, now let's get into our devotion and see what it would have to say to us. Although the ocean is full of salt water, fresh water rivers and rain bring the earth balance. If water is overly salty, life cannot exist. At one of the lowest elevations on earth, the Dead Sea is one such place. Fresh water flows into it from the Jordan, but since it cannot flow out, it's overly salty, quelling life for all fish and plants. Salt must be balanced in our bodies as well. A healthy amount of sodium keeps your body fit and healthy. Too much sodium, however, well, and that leads to high blood pressure. And low sodium, which is often depleted through exercise, may cause your muscles to fail to work. That is why energy drinks are so popular. They add electrolytes or salt back into the body. And friends, God always provides for you his baptized child in Christ with the right amount of salt through regular reception of his word and sacraments so that you may taste salty to others while not being a salty waste. By Jesus' death and resurrection, you are preserved from sin, death, and hell. And while you yet remain in this world, your saltiness may be a blessing to others. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, you have made us the salt of the earth in baptism. Let our lives reflect your life in us now and always. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. The last part of that prayer is so wonderful. Let our lives reflect your life in us now and forever. Oh, I love it. And you know what? It reminds me of the passage that we read uh, yesterday that talked about how um, you are the light of the world when Jesus says that we are the light of the world. I have a cross right here that says, I am the light of the world. And so how can Jesus say we are the light of the world and him say he is the light of the world? Well, this, this prayer, this last part of the prayer exposes all of that. We can be called the light of the world because the light of the world is living inside of us. Let me read the last part of this prayer again and you'll see the connection. The last part of this prayer was, let our lives reflect your life in us now and always. Isn't that wonderful? When someone would take the verse that talks about, I am the light of the world and you are the light of the world and put them next to each other, it would be like, well, these two things contradict each other. Never, never, ever. These two things complement each other because of what the whole canon of scripture says. Isn't it 
beautiful when we don't cherry pick and we know the whole Bible. And if you're someone who is still getting to know God through his word, and you're still kind of getting into the routine of Bible study, oh friends, be prepared to just love every single thing that you read and be prepared to see the connection from Genesis to Revelation because it's there and it's magnificent. Friends, I love you so much and I'll meet you back here tomorrow. Bye.